Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a timepiece that, along with the 5235G, likely is my favorite Patek Philippe reference co-equally, and this is my favorite version of the Patek Philippe Gondolo 5100. This is the 5100G-001, designed with a Manta-style case in honor of the 1950s reference 2554 Manta. This was the millennial reference, built in four different precious metals, all three golds and platinum. The white gold model you see here was made in 450 copies with a lovely sunburst blue dial, an extravagant case shape, incredible camber, a vaulted crystal, and a 10-day power reserve movement that is COSC chronometer. All of this in a wonderfully wearable package that's only 46 millimeters from lug to lug, and if you were to measure it across, and you really do have to measure the crown in this case because it's one of the points of the case, it's 34 millimeters across. So it's a broad watch, but it's not an extensive span across the wrist. I can recommend this millennial Y2K reference for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. It's not a thick watch either, 11.9 millimeters, and you can see that the case flank is nicely sloped. That manta wing does help a cuff to ride up over the flank of this watch, so you can easily wear it with a dress sleeve and you can see the spacing between the lugs 20 millimeters a fairly standard size as a result the watch can be shod with an aftermarket or OEM alternative fairly easy as 20 millimeters is a fairly universal strap size zooming in a little bit closer give ourselves a bit more light the strap is bolstered. It is a very high gloss, navy blue, large rectangular scale alligator leather. You can see sheer sided construction of the strap that shows you the layers. And then you can see that there's a monotone stitch in blue to match. This is a new Patek Philippe Cav underlined factory strap. And you can see it features outstanding condition throughout. You will have the chance to be the first one to gouge it. Matching white gold Patek Philippe polished spade style pin buckle in white gold. Look, there's a little there's a little revetment for the pin inside the buckle. Attention to detail, a strong suit of Patek. Now the case band is remarkably fluid. As you can see, it scarcely has a straight line. The only real straight lines being formed by the bottom of the dial where it abuts the bezel and then of the case back. This watch for the most part is all about compound curves and you can see just how dramatically concave the flank of the case really is. Let me give this actually a bit less light for contrast here. You can see how concave the flank of the case is. You can also see that there's a little bit of a teardrop profile to the underside of the lugs and a very pronounced point to the junction of the two ends of the case at the midsection. The crown likewise has wonderful little shear guards. They are there principally to flank the crown, which out acts as the outcropping of this manta wing. The dial is extraordinary. It's a sunburst blue and you can see it's quite it's quite reactive. It's tough to capture it because of this cambered sapphire that matches the curve of the case, but I'll do my best. As you can see, it's a sunburst. It's a metallic. It features twin registers that are sunken with a little splash of red for the last day of power reserve. White gold Arabic numerals as well as indices. Faceted and white gold Dauphine style hands at center. You can see the watch has a constant seconds dial. And then it has a 10-day power reserve sub-register, both of which feature a little bit of concentric snailing or textural concentric circles on their faces. Turn it all over, and for me, this is where the fun really starts. This is the caliber 2820 REC. REC for rectangular. It's also an IRM for power reserve indicator. And this is a tribute to traditional Geneva watchmaking. You can see nine individual chatons for everything from the twin mainspring barrel pivots to the train running down to the balance. Note that there's an old school pocket watch style center wheel rather than an off centered wrist watch great wheel, and that there are finger style bridges for the train of the fourth wheel and the escape wheel, just as you would see on a vintage Geneva-made Geneva Hallmark Patek pocket watch. And this is a Geneva Hallmark movement, but it's more than that, as it's also a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. You can see created for the year 2000. Y2K was big back then, and even Patek was in the spirit. So it's a certified chronometer. It's also a 29 jewel movement with nine of them incredibly set in those golden chatons. You can see linear Cote de Genève. There's a mirrored glow to the edge of every bridge because it's rounded, beveled, and optically smooth. All of the screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and there is a treatment or engine turning on the base plate. 
The Gyromax balance beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and thanks to those enormous mainspring barrels, you do have that 10-day, 240-hour power reserve. The movement, you'll note, is properly sized and shaped for the case, right down to the kinks of the corners, and that's the mark of a true manufacturer, a manufacturer that is able to both make a movement in-house and size and shape it for the case in which it will be used, matching the movement to the vessel. This is an extraordinary watch, and I'm sorry, but my video really doesn't do it justice. From the luster of the dial to the complexities of the case to the beauty of the movement, this is one you just have to see in person, and I can't think of a more pleasurable way to get acquainted. See it and start the process on thewatchbox.com.